Hi there, my name is Mila Kudri and I am a STEM ambassador. I work for a company called HR Wallingford and there I am an oceanographic scientist. So this means that at university I studied the subject of oceanography and this is the study of the seas. So it's uh, all the bits of geography that focus on the ocean. So it's everything from waves and tides and currents uh, through to the marine life that lives in the seas and then all the way down to the underlying seabed. And I study the impacts that waves and tides have on wind farms, which can be built out at sea. These wind turbine structures uh, produce a renewable kind of energy from the wind. And this means that it's a sustainable energy since it doesn't contaminate our environment and it won't ever run out. And it reduces the use of fossil fuels, which otherwise cause global warming. Most wind farms built out at sea um, stand on a single kind of long pylon, which is uh, pushed all the way down into the seafloor. And this goes into the, the sand of the seafloor, which then holds it up. And I designed the protection, which can be placed around the bottom of this uh, structure, and it prevents the sand from being washed away. And this means that the wind farm doesn't fall over. So my job varies a lot from day to day. Uh, some days I'll be writing computer codes to carry out calculations about how quickly the sand might wash away. And then other days I'll be creating graphs and maps, uh, which we use to share our results with the company responsible for building the wind farm. And then finally, other days I am in our laboratories where we create scaled down versions of the wind farms on which we can conduct different experiments. So now I'm going to share with you a video which will show one of our laboratory uh, tests that we did. Uh, so in this video, uh, hopefully you can see at the back are these sort of grey panels moving backwards and forwards and these are creating waves. And then you can see this red structure here in the middle of the flume and that is a scaled down version of one of the structures which ho normally holds up a wind turbine. So in this testing facility we can test loads of different waves and we can test different currents and then we can see what impact they will have on the structure. Uh, there's also kind of other things around our site which makes it sustainable. Uh, so one of these things is an electric car charging point. And if you have an electric car, then it means that you're not using fossil fuels directly into your car. So it means that it is a more sustainable form of transport. And finally, I will be going through some of your questions that you sent in to us. Uh, so the first question that we received was, do the wind turbines sit on floating platforms? Uh, well, some of them do. In this image here, you can see three different uh, wind turbines. And these are all examples of floating turbines. Uh, so they don't actually have a structure which goes down into the seafloor. Instead, they're kind of supported by these anchors which go down and uh, hold them in place. But as I said before, most of the wind turbines are on a structure which is pushed into the seafloor. Uh, next question is, how do you get power from the wind farms back to the national grid? Uh, basically, it's a whole series of cables which connect uh, each wind turbine together and then there's just kind of one really large cable which goes all the way up the shore, uh, up the beach and then connects into the national grid. The next question is, what parts of wind farms do you design? Uh, so I've already said a bit about this, but I help design the protection which is put at the bottom of the structure to prevent the sand from washing away. So this can be made out of different materials. Uh, so on the left here, we have an image where we try to recreate seagrass, so a plant which naturally grows on the seafloor, and this tries to then trap sand and stop it from being washed away. Or you can put down things like uh, in this image on the right here, which is a rock protection. The next question is why are wind turbines sometimes turned off uh, when there's a lot of wind? And the reason for this is safety. So if the wind uh, is too fast, then it can put a lot of stress on the blades uh, and they go faster and faster. This may then creates friction and heat within the uh, wind turbine and it can cause a lot of damage to them. So instead what they do is they rotate the blades a little bit and this then means that they don't spin around uh, and it doesn't cause any damage to them. The next question that came in was, what subjects do you have to study at school to get into oceanography? Uh, well, at sort of GCSE level, you're looking at English, maths and science. And then at A level, um, generally you have to kind of do two of the preferred subjects. And these might be biology, chemistry, geography, maths, environmental studies, geology or physics. Um, but it will vary from university to university. So you'll need to check uh, what the specifics are for each given course. And the next question is, what did you want to be when you were little? Uh, I always wanted to be a vet for the longest time I can remember. 
And then when I was about 15 or 16, I went and did some work experience at my local vets and I decided it just wasn't for me. Uh, so I ended up doing oceanography. So it's really important to know that it's fine to change your mind. And also it's really important to go and get work experience and to try out all the different jobs at a young age so that you can know whether or not it's the sort of thing that you do want to do. And then the next question came in from Emma Dawson and she asks, is science a job for women? I believe it is, but I'd like to hear your opinions. Uh, yes, science is a job for everyone. Uh, so many of my colleagues are women and I think that having a team made up of men and women uh, makes it a lot stronger because both genders have their own strengths and weaknesses. So by working together, we can have a stronger team. Uh, the next question is, what's your favorite part of your job? Uh, I like that every day is really different. So I get to solve lots of different problems by applying my scientific knowledge across projects which are all the way across the world. And then the final question is, uh, why is sustainability an important part to your work? Well, we only get given one planet to call our home, uh, so it's our job to take really good care of it. And I think that each one of us can make a really big difference in our day-to-day -day lives. And it's really great that I also get to do this uh, in my work as well. Uh, so that's all the questions from you guys. So thank you so much for listening. And thank you for watching my video. I'm really proud to be a STEM ambassador. Uh, it's a really large network of volunteers and our commitment and support is bringing STEM subjects to life and it really helps demonstrate the value of them in careers. So you too, if you wish, can uh, request a STEM ambassador to support your school and community group activities, either face-to-face -face or online uh, by visiting the STEM learning website. So thanks again for all your questions. If you didn't get a chance to ask yours, uh, then please send it in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it.